Right, I'm about to start this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a napkin over the top. So you're not going to be able to see much, but the reason is that if you don't, it doesn't have to be a napkin, it be a tea towel or a dishcloth or anything like that. The, the pastry, sorry, the flour in the pastry is going to want to come out and it's just going to go everywhere. So if you put this over the top, it reduces the amount of mess that you're going to get later. So let's give it a go. Okay, so this is my pastry. I literally just took it out of the food processor, put it into a bowl, and then formed it into a ball. It should just come together into a ball really easily, but if it doesn't, then just add either a couple of teaspoons of water or a couple of teaspoons of milk, and then just keep doing it that way until it comes together. Don't try and add loads all in one go, because if you do, it might go too far the other way and then it's sticky, and you really don't want it to be sticky. If it's like this, and it's just got a few cracks in it, you're all right. And you're better at this way than you are the other way where it's sticky because these will just come together when I roll it out. The fat just, if I just do that, you see, it just comes straight out. So don't worry about that. This is gonna go into some cling film and it's gonna go into the fridge for half an hour. This is my pastry quite cold now to the touch. Now all I'm going to do is roll it out but I'm going to show you both ways to do it and I'm going to show you the tins I'm using as well. So I'm using two of these. These are called bunk tins. I don't know if you can see the profile there but they're really not very deep. They're certainly not muffin tins and I have two and the reason is I'm going to put some in here and then I'm going to, sp well, I'm going to spray it first and then I'm going to put them in here and then I'm going to put this one on top. And what that means is they'll turn out perfectly this shape. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'll show you that. And what I'm using is Easy Bake. Now if you have something else that you prefer, then just use that. But I'll just show you. So I'm just doing one coat. And then I'll be spraying this side when I put the one on top. So that's how it's going to work. And all you need to do is roll this out. Uh, what I'm going to do is just flour my surface first. And a bit on there. Now I'm actually saving half of this. So once I've rolled it out, I'll work out how much half is. And then put that away. Right, I can see it a bit easier in there. So I'm just going to break it about there there we go but that's all I need so this will be going into a ziploc bag into the freezer for the next time I decide to make something and this is what we're going to roll out don't be afraid if you start to notice a few cracks it's not a problem at all Most of the time they just roll out, and even if they don't, it's pastry. And what you want is a more flaky pastry. You don't want it to be overworked. Okay, so you can see I've rolled it out now, and I'm going to use a cutter now. I know that this cutter is just a little bit bigger than the hole. So this is what I want to use, and I'm just going to push down and give it a little shake and that is literally all I'm going to do and then it's going to go into my prepared tin sure to push it all the way down. If you get any holes or cracks or anything, just fill those in with a bit of excess pastry.
Now be sure to get it right down to the bottom of the tin. If you don't, they won't go flat. So just push it down as far as you can. Okay, for those of you who don't want to roll it out and use a, a cutter, what you can do, you take a piece of your pastry and you break a little bit off. Maybe a touch more than that. Now the amount you need depends on the size of your tin, obviously. But you get the ball and you push it into the space. And you just kind of mould it. You want it to come up to the top. You want to make sure that no part is really particularly thinner than any other part because if it's not roughly the same thickness all the way through, it might break when you take it out. Okay, so that is in there. And you can just continue doing that. This has actually got a flower on it now, but um, I'm going to spray this side. The reason I've done that is to stop it from sticking. I'm going to gently place it on the top there, and just so you can see, the pastry is in there. What this does mean is it's going to cook quicker. So it's really important that you put it on a low temperature. I'm going to be doing mine at 170. I'm going to put it in for 10 minutes and then I'm going to have a look to see how it is. At that point, depending on the color of them, I might take this bit off because this is going to cook the sides quite a bit. So 10 minutes, I'll have a look. I might take it off, I might not, but you just need to keep an eye on it. So it depends on your oven. And I wouldn't say put it in there for more than 20 minutes. You are not looking for this to be golden brown. You're looking for it to be cooked. So as soon as it just starts to be a slightly deeper shade and you feel like it's cooked, take it out. So my pastry tarts are out of the oven. They've been out for about 10, 15 minutes. I let them cool in the tin and now I've just turned them out and put them on the side. Whilst I was doing that, I prepared my fruit. So here it is. I have washed it and it's, I'd probably say 90% dry. I have blueberries, blackberries and strawberries, but you could use kiwis, anything you like. So I'm going to just show you the, quickly the way that I sliced my strawberry. Obviously I've washed it and I've dried it. You take the top off. And then with the flat edge, you just put it on your surface. And then you slice off a quarter. So it's like this. Then you slice it in half, so you get those beautiful lines there. And then you've got half your strawberry left and you're just going to turn it around the other way. And slice that bit off. So you've got two out of that. Now you can do several things with those, put them in your breakfast, put them in another recipe, or you can eat them, which is what I'm going to do later. So other than preparing my fruit, I have my Philadelphia, that's at room temperature, and I've got some double cream, admittedly this is fake cream, and um, I've got some apricot jam because I'm going to need that. So first of all what I'm going to do is make the filling, then I'm going to do the glaze, then I'm going to put it together, and then I'm going to put the glaze over the top. So into my bowl. I'm going to put, I'll just use this, half of my Philadelphia. Now you could obviously measure this, but I have a 300 gram tub and I need 150 grams, so that's pretty easy. Now what you're also going to put into this is double cream and you're also going to add powdered sugar, but first of all we're going to mix this until it's smooth because at the moment it'll be quite hard. It's really, really important that even though this is soft now, I mean it could be softer, do not use this straight out of the fridge. 
it will curdle and it won't go smooth and it won't look very nice so make sure that it has been out on the side i would probably say at least half an hour but if you can leave it an hour an hour and a half that would be even better so i'm just going to whisk this up with my electric whisk and then i'll come back and show you once it's done and then we're going to add the powdered sugar this is now mixed to that i'm going to add four tablespoons of cream that is 60 mils by the way I'm just going to mix this up. Okay. Now, this part is optional. You can add a little bit of vanilla bean paste. Now, I love vanilla bean paste, so I'm just going to add a tiny drop there. You could use any kind of extract you like. You could even use alcohol if you want. Just make sure that you don't add too much of whatever it is because you don't want to affect the consistency. Okay, and the final piece of this puzzle is powdered sugar. This is two ounces otherwise known as icing sugar or confectioner sugar. And I'm going to stir it around first before I switch this on. Now, it's really important that you taste this as you're going along because you might find this too sweet. So if you don't feel that you like sweet things, maybe add one ounce, taste it, and see if you like it. And then just add as much or as little as you like. Okay, so that is done. Mmm, that tastes really good. Okay, final thing before we can put it together. There is one tablespoon of water in this. And to it, I'm going to add some apricot jam. Some people call it preserve. And all it is is a clear jam basically i mean it is apricot but you can use any flavor you like it's just we're using this particular one because of the color so add one generous teaspoon and then this is going to go in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then if it's not enough i'll feel like maybe it's a minute Basically, you just want it to be of a brushing consistency because you're going to brush it over the tart. So I'll put this in the microwave and come back. My apricot glaze is out of the microwave. It's just here. It's completely ready. And so I'm just letting it cool a little bit. So I'm going to put this together now. These are my tarts. You can see that they are cooked, but they are not too brown. It's really important not to get them too brown. And these are the ones that I pushed down. I didn't use the cutter, I just pushed them down. I don't think they look particularly attractive, but I know that some people um, on YouTube think that it's a really good idea. So I thought I would show you how it turns out because they never seem to actually show you how it turns out. I don't think it's very good. Okay, so you take one of these, which is completely cool. Do not start these if they're not completely cool because what it does is it melts the filling and you really don't want that. Now I've put my filling into a pastry bag. You don't need to, you could just use two spoons, but I find that you get the neatest result this way. So, let's pipe it round. You don't wanna to add too much. So you just wanna make sure that there's a little bit of a gap at the top. That's so you can put your fruit on. So then you can pretty much do any design you like. I like to have my strawberry as a centerpiece and then a blackberry, and then I just fill in the gaps with blueberries.
that one's too big. There we go. So that's how I do mine. I'm going to show you some pictures. You can do them any way you like. So I'm going to do some varying designs so they give you some options. And then I'll show you them all at the end. I've finished all of my tarts now and I just wanted to show you the glaze. So you can probably see here it's a little bit shiny and the reason that it's shiny is because I added my apricot glaze. So this is how you do it. It's super super simple. I have my glaze here. If you feel like it's too thick at this point then literally just stick it back in the microwave for 10 seconds and that should sort it out. And just gently and delicately brush the fruit and what that does is it helps to preserve the tart and it makes it look nice and glossy but it also stops the fruit from drying out so just be delicate with it you can always go back over it if you need to and that is it that is how you glaze them so I'm going to show you some pictures of all the individual ones so you can see the different designs and you can use any fruit you like. You can add a lot more colour to it, a bit more pop by adding say some mango or some orange segments or maybe some kiwi. Um, but I decided to stick with three fruits because my tarts are quite small. But if you were making a larger tart, you could certainly add five, six or even seven or eight fruits. So I would definitely experiment with the flavour combinations that you like and the different designs. And thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.